Yo, what's up YouTube? Hey, Parsh here. We're gonna do some uh, more content today. We're gonna talk about the M Coupe that I bought on Copart a couple weeks ago. We're gonna talk about some other cars that I'm looking at buying, and we're gonna talk about getting my used car sales license. Stay tuned. Alright, so let's talk about my M Coupe first. Um, I did pick up a roof off of uh, someone here on uh, Z Post. I don't know if you guys have ever been on this website, but it's part of Bimmerfest website where they have different subcategories, forums for basically every BMW ever made. And so this particular part of Bimmerfest is called Z Post and it's for uh, Z Force. Um, and there's even different parts for different types of Z cars. So Z3, Z4, the newest Z4. Uh, so this is for the 2002 to 2008 Z4s. And um, yeah, so I found a guy that had a roof up in uh, Los Angeles area. And I picked that up from him. <clears throat> and the plan with that is to do some uh, carbon fiber wrapping on that. Not wrapping, but carbon fire, fiber layering. So I will be taking that roof. It's like a navy blue color roof. Um, I'm going to clean it up, get all the, you know, uh, I think it's called wax and I'll do, be using wax and uh, grease remover and all that stuff, making sure the panel is just completely clean. And then I'll be laying one layer of carbon fiber over it and following all the instructions on the internet on how to do that using, I think it's like a resin or epoxy stuff that hardens it and see how it turns out. If I totally screw it up, um, well, I could always just put another layer over it or I could just say this wasn't for me, I shouldn't try doing this and give up on it and move along. Uh, and if it works out really well, I might start doing more panels and do the whole car, carbon fiber, um, the whole M coupe. So I think that'd be really cool if I did the whole car and it would also save me a lot of money. It would just be a lot of work, um, but I'm okay with that because it was a project car. Um, so there's the roof. Um, I also just found this guy here on Z post who has a black front bumper that's in really good condition and he's only asking 300 bucks so I just hit him up he's in Northern California and I'm in Southern California so I can't just drive up and pick it up but um, I get really good shipping rates so I sent him a message and said if I'd be willing to pay PayPal and uh, if you could get it boxed up I'll just send you a shipping label and uh... all right so yeah there's a guy here on Z post he's selling uh, the Eurospec uh, Z4 m cooper m roadster catalytic converters and these have a uh, a lesser cell count than the u.s version so it's it's basically like getting a high flow cat that can still pass smog in california and is gonna so it's gonna flow better and give you a little bit more power so he has the regular set for sale for about fourteen hundred dollars um and then he has a set where he says he needs to let's see where was it? I have another that is just a little loose and needs to be tack welded and as most of you know that have ever been to an exhaust shop um, that's no big deal uh, you just you know you could get someone to tack weld something for you in an exhaust shop for 50 bucks it's no no problem so he said uh, $500 sent I offered him I think 300 or 350 um and said that i would pay for the shipping and he agreed so i'm picking up one of these bad boys so this is going to start my exhaust system um continuing with the exhaust system trend uh let's see i had this is frustrating this is remus usa that makes remus brand exhaust systems and they have a used exhaust system for z4ms and they're calling it new other. This new, this is a new system that was used on a previous Bimmerfest show has been in the warehouse. So it, it's not new. Come on, Remus. It's not new. It was on a car. The car was driven. It's now used. It's lightly used, but it's used. They're asking $1,300. I think that's a little bit ridiculous. I offered him $600 bucks and plus the shipping, and they just declined it. I think I then offered them six fifty and they declined it, and I'm just a little bit surprised that they wouldn't they weren't willing to sell a used exhaust system for six fifty. Um, so that's a little frustrating. Um, but I did buy an intake, and I'm going to tell you guys about that. So um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with throttle. 
Uh, they're a kind of like a online car club. They make a lot of YouTube videos. Um, I actually was on their YouTube video the other day um, with Mickey. He he's doing a Project RX Seven that is just so sick. But I digress. Uh, they have really good deals where if you're paying for the ten dollars a month membership, they give you ten percent off parts. So they have the AFE intake, which is probably the most popular intake for the M Coupe, and their price is right in line with what other people charge actually on the cheap side so they're showing it for $499.99 uh, and if you look that up on the internet pretty much the the only other sorry all the other companies are pretty much charging about that price if not more somewhere more like $525 but then you could get 10% off this so subtract another uh, what is that 50 bucks did I do bad math there um, I think that's right sorry if I'm having a brain fart this is really basic math and I'm just on camera so i'm nervous <laughs> uh yeah 50 bucks so it'd be 450 that's a pretty good deal right just for being a member that's that's just five months of your uh membership dues um that you paid that you just not saving so um i was gonna buy this but i and they make two versions they make a dry and they make this one the magnum four stage one and then they make the dry one which is right here uh i don't know really what the difference is they're both pretty much the same name except this one just says uses the word dry i believe that the other one you probably have to put oil in it um and i kind of don't really care that much between the two i looked up that you know on google what are people saying and there's nothing about it but unfortunately when i take this part number and then go on google and i find amazon 328 prime so someone, you know, must have needed to get rid of these. These cars have been out for, all, all, you know, what is it, uh, 13 years or whatever. So they're getting a little bit older now. And there's, these parts were made a long time ago. And they probably don't sell very often because there aren't very many of these cars built. So uh, I'm just guessing. They probably were like, we need to get these out of the warehouse. Let's put the price cheap and move them. They only had two left. So I, I bought one. But here was the snag. They will not let you ship to California. It says right here that... This product is not carb exempt at this time and not legal for sale in California. Luckily, my parents live in Oregon, so I shipped it to Oregon, and then I'm just gonna send a shipping label to my parents. It'll probably cost 10 or 15 bucks to ship it from my parents to my house, and uh, I don't have to pay any tax, and you know I'm just paying another 15 bucks, so it really ended up being about 300, let's just say 350. It's gonna be about 350 bucks, which is still a really cheap deal. For a high quality intake like this so I've got the intake covered uh, I'm working on I've got a little bit of exhaust or in the works here with the cats and then I do want to get some uh, replace the mufflers to get some extra sound there too and I will I will do that I just it's not I'm not in a hurry um, anyway so let's move on I just want to show you some other cool stuff I saw on throttle so they have the APR front wind splitter and I saw this on uh, a guy's car uh, two days ago when I picked up the the hood, sorry, the roof. Um, the guy that I picked it up from had an M Coupe, and he had this installed, and it looked really good. Um, so it's making me think I might want to get one too. And they have them for four twenty eight, and I think that's probably a pretty good price for an APR part that is carbon fiber. Um, they have a APR adjustable wing, and the guy that I bought the roof from also had not this brand but it looks so similar to this and it looked amazing like i thought i'm not always a huge fan of wings but it looked just so perfect i think he, his was varus brand um but anyway it looked pretty similar to this and apr is a good brand too and that's eleven hundred dollars it sounds a little bit expensive but i know it's probably pretty in line with what it should cost um and then i saw they have a hood if i decide i want to just get a completely new hood they have them for 650 um and then they had side skirt or front bumpers for 721 which i just mentioned i found a really good condition one that i can get for a lot cheaper that's used so uh that's about it for the parts department um i have a lot of parts on the way uh, let me pull up my list of stuff to talk about so uh i have package a lot of packages coming in next week with parts so i'll make videos of that I have the belly pan, I don't know why I put panty, sorry, belly pan, fender liners, windshield cowl, and there's a bunch of other knick-knacky things. Um, I, I always talked about the exhaust, uh, the Eurocat, we talked about that, we bought, talked about the intake, oh, the title, the title came in today, or uh, it actually came yesterday, so 
that was a pretty quick turnaround. They told me it was going to be 12, about 12 business days. And I think it ended up being more like seven. Um, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, so I'm actually going to, after I'm done making this video, I'm going to drive over to AAA and get the, uh, the title all completed here in California and give them a bunch of money because it is going to be about, I've got the spreadsheet I had made where I use the DMV website, um, current registration, blah, 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 blah. The tax is a lot. It comes out to be about $1,250, $1,250 that I have to pay them. Um, so that's not super fun. Um, but it, it's just how you, how you have to do it. It's out of state and things like that. So that being said, I'm going to get that done and then let's move on and kind of transition with what we're talking about to my car sales license. Um, so about a, three weeks ago, I think it was, I decided that it'd be really smart of me after I bought this car, actually the M coupe, it was, it'd be really smart of me to look into getting a car sales license, use car sales license. I started researching it. And I had researched it multiple times, probably over the past three years, just kind of how do you do it? What do I need to do? And is it just kind of understand, trying to get a, a little bit of an understanding of how it works. But this time I'm actually serious and I'm going to do it. Um, so I took the class. You have to take a six hour class. Um, I did that. And then they give you a test that you have to take at the class. You have to pass the test at the class. And I did very well on the test. And then um, you have to take the real DMV test, which is way crazier because the one you take in the class thing, you can talk to, you can look through your uh, notes and uh, you can talk to the person that you're taking the course with if there's other people. And so, I mean, it was easy to get all of them right. But um, the DMV thing is a lot more difficult and they actually just changed all of the, cl the questions. I guess the questions had been the same for about 14 years. So the lady that taught the class was saying that it's really, you know, oh, I already know all the questions that they're going to ask you and here's what they're going to be. But they changed them like we're just within the past six months. And so she doesn't even know what questions there were going to be. But fortunately, I still passed. Um, so I got the probably the two biggest things done. The next big steps I need to do are I need to have a location. Uh, it has to have a two by two. Uh, sign two foot two feet by two feet sign with my company logo or, or name on the front that in, also includes um, below it the, op the hours that it's open um, I need to have two parking spots for car sales and I need to have an office inside um, with like a phone and a lockable cabinet and some other things um, so the other stuff shouldn't be too difficult because I already have a warehouse and um, I'm planning on just using my current warehouse as a dual purpose. Um, it will be, there's just a little bit of stuff I have to, hoops I have to jump through for that, but that's fine. So I, I just have a, a checklist of all this other stuff. I have to fill out a bunch of paperwork. I have to get live scan fingerprinting. But um, once I get my car sales license, which I'm really assuming that I can get it done be, maybe within one month. Um, once I do that, there's a lot of huge perks I bet most people don't know about. Um, and for, for starters, this $1,250 that I just mentioned, I'm going to have to pay for tax and registration and stuff. That would be $0. Um, and I could just pay $87 for a dealer license plate. It's $87 per year for a dealer plate. Now here's some interesting thing for anyone that lives in California and you just like cars. Let's not, let's just say you like cars and you buy cars fairly often. And once in a while you sell a car that you're just, you know, put on Craigslist or Auto Trader. Um, there are a lot of perks to having your used car sales license for just even for, as a hobby, basically. Um, so you can use a, if you are the owner of the business for your car, your used car business, you can use the dealer plate on any car you want that you, that you own. And you, you don't have to have a reason to do it. Like there, I, I'm, what I'm getting at is, I think a lot of people would probably assume, oh, I could probably only use that dealer plate if I'm driving to and from the dealership or I'm running an errand for work or insert something that's a little bit about work, work, work. No, you can, you can use that dealer plate on any car you want to drive. You can take the plate off. You can move it to any other car. It's, it's that easy. You don't, it's, not, it's not assigned to one car. It's assigned to any car you want. And you can do it for anything you want. You can go to the beach with that. You could go shopping. You can do anything you want 
with that plate and it's $87 a year per plate. It's a really good deal. Now, if you're if you have a really good job and you make a lot of money and you like cars and you spend a lot of money on cars, you are the prime candidate to be getting your used car sales license because if you look at how much you're paying on exotic cars especially, like if you're buying cars that are $100,000 or more and you live in California, you're paying you know, ten ten thousand dollars plus in registration fees and taxes every time you buy a car, you don't have to pay any of that anymore. You don't have to pay taxes on cars. So why not get it? So you do have to have a place of business, right? And so that you yeah, there's that. But if you're talking about saving ten thousand dollars and a lot of people that buy exotic cars they don't just sit on the same car forever. They they swap them out every couple of years and get another exotic car. So you're if you're moving these cars and buy every time you buy one, you're another ten grand, another ten grand. It's two hundred thousand dollars, twenty grand. You know, it's it's a it's a lot of money. You can just get a cheapy office that's you know part of a big building. You talk to the people. You say I have to have a sign. They say sure, put the sign over here. There's a lot of ways to do it. There's a lot of people on YouTube that have showed you, yeah, you know, I just got an office inside of this building that has 50 offices and they allow me to, you know, operate it here and no problem. Um, so you can find places that are probably 500 bucks a month. And especially if you're, if, if you're never really going to use it for real business. Um, well, sorry, I shouldn't say that because you, you really are supposed to use it like you. If you're if when you do end up selling one of your cars, you do have to do the transaction at that place of business. You can't do it at your house. You, if you get caught doing that, you can get your license taken away. So, but and you probably should sell a car every year to keep your business, your car sales license. Um, but if you're into this, if you're into cars, that shouldn't be a problem selling a car every year. Um, anyway, so there's a lot of perks, and and even if you think about this again. If you're buying really expensive cars, like I said, and you have and th this might seem like a hassle, but you save so much money. If you if you spend five hundred bucks a month, and if you just buy a car and sell a car every year, just to make to show that you're doing some business, uh, you're covering everything, and you're just keeping it. You're still saving thousands and thousands of dollars on the taxes that you're saving. So it's not. Don't get me wrong. It, it sounds a lot like it's tax um, evasion, but it's it's not because California specifically is actually saying that if you sell even one car per year that they want you to get your used car sales license they, that was actually a question on the test how many cars do you need to sell a year for california to expect you to get your used car sales license the answer is one you can only sell uh zero cars per year to not have to get your used car sales license they want anyone that even sells one car ever to get their used car sales license so they're actually pushing you to do this. This isn't tax evasion. Um, okay, so let's move on. I'm blabbing about that too much, but I'll be doing more videos maybe about getting my used car sales license as it progresses. Um, but let's talk about, I'm always nerding out. I'm looking at what good deals are out there for cars. And if I want to buy another project or whatever it will be, I, I shouldn't, it's probably stupid of me, but I have a problem with that kind of thing. So uh, what are that? What are the Hoonigans call it? Carcane. Um, so let's talk about a couple of things I saw. I saw this Porsche. So, oh, and, and also with my car, my car uh, business that I'm gonna start, I wanna do some Turo rentals as well. I don't know if you're familiar with Turo.com. Um, Turo.com, this is a car rental website. So anyone can do this. And like, for instance, I have my GTR on there, but I think I have a price too high. I haven't got anyone wanting to drive it yet. I have it like 450 bucks a day, which, I know it's too high. I need to be like probably 250 bucks a day to get people biting on it. But uh, let's just do San Diego and search. And you can get some really, I mean, like we well, could just rent this. If you're just trying to get a cheap rental car, it's probably cheaper to use Turo than to use like Hertz. I mean, you get this Mini Cooper, for instance, for 29 bucks a day. Here's a convertible three series for 51 bucks a day. I mean, it, it's, there's just tons of cars on here and there's some Ferraris and Lamborghinis and stuff like that too. Um, I actually am going to use this tomorrow on my trip. I'm going up to Sacramento and I rented a Polaris slingshot. It was a hundred, oops, not Googler, Google. Um, it was 150 bucks a day for, for a Polaris slingshot, which I think is a little bit pricey for how much, when you look at how much the car costs, they're like 20 grand brand new. 
Um, so I, I think that it's a little bit expensive on the per day thing, but the fun factor is all there. So I'm driving up from Sacramento to Tahoe, which is a really fun drive if anyone's ever done that drive. And I'm really looking forward to it. Um, they're just a, a cool car or whatever you want to call it. It's like a motorcycle almost. Um, so I want to put my cars on Turo and there's certain cars that are really good for Turo and Caymans are actually really good for Turo. Um, so I saw this Cayman S on Turo for 12 grand. I'm like, whoa, what's going on here? It's in Sparks, Nevada. Please don't snake me on this purchase. Oh, don't go and snake me and buy it out from under me. Um, so I talked to the guy already and he's got a wrap job on it. He says there's, there's damage and he's saying that there's door damage i i don't really i don't know if it's like underneath the door in that in this area i'm not really sure what's going on he's, he's been he hasn't been very helpful with his answers to questions it does look like there's a reflector missing there and maybe there's like damage on the bottom bumper uh i'm not sure it, it seems a little bit weird but um he's also saying it doesn't start and it might need a new motor but that the people that he and he must have bought it from an auction because all the things he's saying are a little bit iffy or weird. He said that the guy that put it on the tow truck or, or the trailer that trailered it over to him was able to get it to start to drive it onto the trailer, but that when he got it, that it's dead and doesn't start. He thinks it's a battery, and I'm kind of thinking, well, if you have a Porsche Cayman S, you probably should try jump starting it. <laughs> I mean, come on. So I, I'm I'm interested. If he's just lazy and I can go jump start it then I'll do that. And it says it has um, an aftermarket exhaust, which is pretty cool. And it is a manual transmission and it does have a clean title and only 34,000 miles. There's a lot of good things going on with this car, despite some bad stuff. Um, so moving into what I did to check this out, cause I figured oh, he's probably a liar and it's probably not a clean title. Um, there's this website called Vin audit and I am not sponsored by Vin audit. This is not a paid anything to do with this, but when I took my used car sales license class, the lady that was running the class said that she by far recommends VIN Audit over everyone else and that most people don't know about this Nimitz, whatever, N N M V T I S. It's a requirement for all California car dealers to put an M an N M V T I S um, paperwork, I guess, on the windows or whatever with every car that they sell. And it's a it's basically like Carfax, but it's better than Carfax, except that the public doesn't really know about it. And VIN Audit is basically doing that. And VIN Audit is like a Carfax, but it's better and cheaper. And it's only $1.99 per, um, per uh, what do you call it? Like run um, VIN, VIN Audit or whatever you want to call it. Every time you run a VIN, it's $1.99 for a dealer, the dealer program and then 20 bucks a month on top of that. I actually ordered 10 of them for, um, 10 for 30 bucks just flat so that was only three bucks per per check which is also pretty cheap so this is that porsche right here and uh i did check it out and it it does look pretty good it does uh let's see let's talk about some of the things that are interesting here um it does show that it was last registered in indiana and that its current title is there it also says that the mileage is i did not notice this it says that the mileage is 80,000. That even back in 2012, it was at 53,000. This guy is saying that it's at 34,000. So maybe I'm, I'm doing this live on camera, but maybe this, there is something shady about this deal. Um, I'm gonna need to talk to that guy some more because I actually, I, call, I said, hey, does it still have Indiana title? And he hasn't said anything back. But it does show no, no salvage or junk title. And there's nothing wrong with the car from here. No theft, no liens, um, and it was last listed for sale in Tennessee. Oh wait, no, actually, this is interesting. Unknown seller, Hollywood. So this is probably where this happened, and it says that the vehicle color was blue. Let's see if there's anything else about the color. No, there's. That's the only place where it talks about the color. Interesting. All right, so. 86,000 miles though. So this guy, something's fishy. He either rolled back the odometer or he is just lying about the 34,000 miles. But when you go down here, there's no problems found, no problems found. Obviously something happened to the car. Maybe someone tracked it and you don't get insurance coverage at the track usually. So um, maybe he, someone spun it out of the track and hit a bumper on a wall or something and he's replaced. Maybe some parts have been replaced, but kind of like a half-assed job. 
and uh, it'll be interesting. At twelve thousand dollars, it's a pretty, it's pretty interesting. And it says OBO, which means he'll do ten, right, or nine. Um, so I'm definitely interested in the car, but the thirty-four thousand miles is definitely a lie. So uh, the other car, there's a couple other cars that I'm interested in lately, and these are more. Some of these are just fun to talk about. This is on IA IAAI website. Uh, this is a 240SX from 1996. It's thrashed as hell. It, it must have been a drift car. You can see that's metal bumpers on the front. This is like everyone knows that the 240SX is like the best like learner drift car to like learn how to drift. You grab one of these, get it really cheap, and you start learning on that. And then if you get better, then maybe you upgrade it to an SR20 DET motor that has a turbo. Bring one over from Japan and swap it in and stuff like that. It's pretty common for people to do that all the time. This says it uh, just is going to go up for bid on next Wednesday. So about a week from today, it'll be the, the auction will be up on this. But um, it is open to the public, and I may bid on this. It's up in Seattle, which isn't too far away. It does start, but it looks like it probably doesn't drive because it looks pretty thrashed. Um, but parts value, there's some parts value here. Uh, despite the car being thrashed all over the panels, um, if you look at the interior, it has a decent looking head unit. It has an aftermarket steering wheel. It is manual transmission. And then, um, let's see. Oh, the motor. So I was looking at this motor. I'm like, oh, it looks kind of beat up. But then, um, I'm like, well, that doesn't, I don't know. That doesn't look like the stock motor. I'm not sure. And so I Googled, uh, I started looking at 1996 240SX motor and I was pretty sure it was a K24. And that was correct and that's what and the k24 looks like uh like this right here i believe yeah so this is like a ka24 and you can see there's distribution distribution wires that are coming over the top like this all four of them they go from left to right um whereas the motor and this this one it has the uh, the wires going backwards to the back of the motor and it, you can tell it's obviously turbo because you can see an inner cooler here and then you can see a blow off valve here um, and what looks to be maybe a turbo even nestled down here so I'm thinking well is that a, is that an SR20 or is that a KA24 that's been turboed and looking at this picture just the way this uh, valve cover looks I'm I was pretty sure it must be an SR24 and then sorry SR20 and then you look at an SR20 and sure enough you know it definitely looks exactly like an SR20 uh, there's a plate though that goes over the wires on most SR20s. You can see it right here as well, and it looks like that plate must just be must be missing from this motor. So this has an SR20 motor, which you know those are definitely worth some some money. Um, let's just go to San Diego and type in SR20 DT. Looks like people are selling them for two to three thousand dollars. So you know this might not be a bad car to grab up and just sell. It pull the motor out and just sell the motor um, or sell the whole car with the motor and say, you know, 3,500 bucks. If that, if you can get this for the right price, that might be kind of a fun project is what I'm getting at. Uh, so anyway, there's another car I saw and I'm not sure how fast I'd be able to pull it up. Uh, let's see my vehicles. I have so many in my, my hopper thing right now that it's probably going to be pretty difficult to find it, but there's a 370Z uh it's a 2000 you know what, i'll do this 2011 370z and it has a supercharger on it let's see if this is it nope not that one god i'm gonna waste too much of your guys time i'll have to probably edit this out this is it okay so this is in Seattle also. Interesting. They have a they must have a big tuner crowd up in Seattle. So uh this is missing like the has a jacked up front fender, missing the hood, missing the front bumper, um, missing the left tire. And but right away you see right here, there is a supercharger attached to this. And it does look like there's some piping right here that's probably for a front mount intercooler that's all bent up. Could be wrong, but it, there's probably some the kit is probably a little bit jacked up. It says the motor starts though. So it should be a good supercharger kit. And there's only 54,000 miles on the motor. There's definitely a lot of worthwhile parts here. 
Um, and here's a better picture of the motor again. And it looks like it's a Stillen supercharger. So uh, let's look at what those run. 370Z Stillen supercharger. Wow, 7,500 bucks, 7,000 here. Um, that's pretty expensive. So yeah, uh, you know, it might be some decent resale value. Someone might want to buy that used if it might be needing a part that needs to be replaced, but it still might be worth about three grand for just the um, just the supercharger kit. And then the motor's got to be worth probably another two or three thousand dollars. It only has fifty four thousand miles on it, and it's working. Um, transmissions there, it's automatic. Unfortunately, there's a a good shape uh, spoiler on the back. Looks like the whole hatch is good. Looks like there's a lot of good parts here. So either someone could say, I'm going to fix this car back up and get it running by buying tons of parts and throwing that, or I'm just going to take this apart and sell a bunch of parts and make some profit. So I think there's a lot of fun stuff like that. And there's a lot of fun things like that on these websites that if you're looking in the right spots, you can find them. Um, but anyway, I think, uh, I think that's pretty much all I had to talk about for today. It's probably a long video again, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like this kind of content, uh, please like and subscribe to my videos and I'll be trying to bring you as many as I can that I have time for. All right, guys.